Hello everyone, welcome to the cockpit, we're at 10,000 feet and today we're going to look at the ADIRS system, Air Data Inertial Reference System. It got a slight overhaul recently uh, and I want to give you some of the details and also explain to you what might come up in the future. Firstly, a very brief introduction of ADIRS. ADIRS actually consists of three separate units. They are called ADRUs, Air Data Inertial Reference Unit. And those three units, they are basically the same. Uh, they, they all provide the same information to the pilot and to the displays in front of us. So they provide airspeed, heading, altitude, attitude and other things. Now, inside of each of those ADRUs, there's actually two parts. The air data reference part and the inertial reference part. The air data reference part is using all the air data related stuff that comes from just outside of the cockpit where you can find pitot tubes, static ports uh, and other means of measuring things about the air <laughs> and our speed in it. Um, and then the inertial reference part is actually uh, a laser gyro based system. And this laser gyro can measure movement uh, and angles in all directions and then present that in the cockpit as well. Now the original version of ADIRS in this A320 didn't really work uh, like it should. Um, as I explained there are three separate ADIRUs but in the initial version those separate ADIRUs didn't actually matter. This, it basically meant that the moment you had one ADRU fully aligned and in nav mode, it would supply data to all the systems, even though that's not how it works in the real aircraft. Now, with the overhaul, the first thing to do was really to separate uh, this information, to separate each individual ADRU so that it could be, be used separately also within the cockpit. And this is what I'm going to show you in a bit more detail now. Now let's move to the overhead panel. We can find ADIRS in the top left. And here you can see the uh, three separate ADIRUs, number one, number two, and number three. Now this, this sequence is a bit different. It's not one, two, three, it's one, three, three, two. Uh, and that's because number one is for the captain side, number two is for the first officer side, and number three is the standby or backup uh, system, which can be used in case one of the other two fails. So what's nice about the system is that you can actually turn off pieces of it, uh, because there might be situations in which the data provided by the inertial reference part of the ADRU is faulty, but the ADR part, the air data reference part, here incorrectly depicted as ADIR, which is, it should be ADR, uh, but it, it might be that one of the two is fault providing faulty data and the other is not. And then you can actually turn one of those sides off. And we're gonna do that just now and we're gonna look at the effects that has uh, in the PFD on, and on the ND. So let's turn off IR1 and see what effect that has on the captain display. Now as you can see, a lot of information is missing at this point. And this is actually all the information that's provided by uh, the inertial reference system. Um, what's important to note now is that this is on the captain side. So you, you can't see attitude, heading, uh, ground speed, wind, and also the position on the map but if you then look over at the first officer side that still works because the first officer side is supplied by IR number two and therefore it still uh, works just as it should. Now let's imagine that this is actually a failure of the system and we want to bring the captain's view back so that he has well the complete picture of what's happening. You can actually now also do that. To do that, you go to the switching panel. There are two uh, relevant buttons here, or knobs. Uh, 
and by moving this to the captain 3 position we basically say provide the captain with information from ADRU 3 instead of ADRU 1 and it's specifically this is about the inertial reference part whereas the air data one is about the ADR part so if we now look at the PFD we can see it's back uh, to displaying all the data that we expected so just to quickly recap the captain now is now looking at information from IR3 which is the backup IR and ADR1 which is its own ADR so now let's turn off the ADR as well and we can see as a result that the speed altitude mark indication and true airspeed are no longer available at this point now we can again go to the switching panel and change to captain 3 on the air data side and then we can see that all the data is actually recovered something interesting to note it relates to the calculation of the wind speed and, and direction that actually depends it, it's something calculated by the inertial reference par portion and it depends on the true airspeed be being available and the true airspeed that needs to be available is of the same ADRU so for example if you get the wind from ADRU 3 then in order to get the actual wind value you would need true airspeed of ADRU 3 to also be available so if we put the air data back to the normal position what we see is that true airspeed is no longer available because hey we turned it off on the overhead panel but the wind is still shown so this is because uh, the IR portion through the switching knob is set to IR3 and IR3 re receives information from ADR3 which is on and therefore it can still display the wind now in a situation where ADR3 would be off it would look slightly different so if we turn that off and then go back you can actually see now that uh, there are dashes instead of uh, the actual wind now the, the dashes here are on purpose it basically means hey there's zero wind uh, and that's the output the IR gives if it doesn't receive the true airspeed however if the IR itself is fully off then there will not be any wind indication as in it will simply say hey there is no information coming and, and therefore i can't display it so there's not even dashes at that point now let's bring the cockpit back to its original state another piece of information that's provided by the aderus is the temperature information now let me actually turn on the standard uh, change to standard so that it will also display ISA and there's no difference there at the moment so it's displaying zero but all this temperature information is provided by the ADR portion of the ADRUS and only ADR1 and ADR3 provided so if both of them fail then you won't have this information let me briefly show you by turning off ADR1 the information is no longer available if I then change air data to captain 3 then it's displayed again and if I then turn it off then again the information is no longer available what I've shown you thus far is kind of the foundational work for adding more advanced features to the ADR system so having the ADRU separated is a huge step and it already makes some of the features in the cockpit work as you would expect them to work but there are things like radio positioning fast alignment or fast realignment I should say the attitude mode a true heading and uh, inertial reference deviation over time all those features they will still need to be added in the future and we look forward to doing so and I hope you 
will enjoy these and the upcoming features in the aircraft.